not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. This guy, everybody talks about Alice Cooper. Screaming Jay Hawkins was kind of the father of shock rock before anybody was doing anything along the lines that he was. He was up there with a cape and there was a coffin and he had a skull and he was singing these songs. And and he's, uh, of course, he died about 25 years ago probably. I think he was having surgery and it, and it went south. But he's also famous for having a lot of kids. A lot of kids. Uh, he had three children with his first wife, but he also kind of got around. He has uh, reportedly between 60 and 75 children. And after he died, they set up a website to trace the kids. Hey, if you think you're one of Screaming Jay Hawkins' kids, uh, click whatever. And they were able to identify... 33 of his children. Wow. And uh, a fraction of those met up and had a reunion after he died. Damn. So he was out there leaving it in. Town to town, up and down the dial. But he did I Put a Spell on You. And it was a big, big song. That's mid-50s, like I said, way before anybody was doing anything with... Uh, shocking kind of stuff and and it kind of makes sense i mean if you if you draw a line between him aspiring to be an opera singer which is obviously very theatrical and then getting into kind of blues and rock and roll but you know you would think that if an artist had a few kids they might benefit from having a big song like that but when you got 75 kids you know the royalty checks are probably like 17 cents Anytime that song is licensed in a movie, because that's far and away his uh, most popular song. Now, for me, I got to go back to Constipation Blues hmm. for Screaming Jay Hawkins. I don't recall anyone else who ever did a song about not being able to take a dump. It should be the theme song for Pound Cake at Work. Constipation. You ever heard Constipation Blues? Mm -mm. Great song. <coughs> Yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm there with him. I'll tell you what a G screaming Jay Hawkins was. He, a couple of years before he died, late 60s. He did Constipation Blues on stage with a toilet next to him at the Taste of Chicago. At the Food Festival, he's up there doing Constipation Blues. Couldn't have worked out better. He finally feels all right. Screaming Jay Hawkins, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio. Again, everybody can go to the mat for who their favorite artists might be uh, getting into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. But the fact that Screaming Jay, unless I miss something, the fact that Screaming Jay Hawkins is not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is a goddamn travesty. Especially being a, a local artist. Mm hmm. I mean, that song alone should get him in. Well, he should have changed his name to Spray and Jay Hawkins. <laughs> yeah. He died in France. Well, excuse me. Oh, did he? Yeah, that's what it said. And it said Is he, that like a great thing? Whoa, d he was 70. He died. You're wrong, Alan. He died in 2000. Yeah, okay. I said 25 years ago, 23 years ago. You said okay. in the 60s. No, no, no. no he never, that he song said, was yeah. in the 60s. Oh, yeah. Or mid-50s. He died. Uh, I say he died about 25 years ago. I wonder where he grew up. I know Cleveland. But Cleveland, like, Ohio. I like Cleveland's I said. He means like place. what part of Cleveland, oh. I think, is what he means. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know the neighborhood. I want to know if his house is like enshrined somewhere. Probably like, not. Get on my nerves. I know Cleveland. I was listening. Mm. I was just curious. Yeah, I don't know. He was put up for adoption and adopted and raised by the Blackfoot Confederacy. Studied classical piano as a child and learned guitar in his 20s. 
I don't know where in Cleveland he lives. He seems like the type of guy that would haunt you after he dies. Like if you're you're living in my house. This is where I used to take my crap. This is where I wrote Constipation, uh, Constipation <laughs> Blues. Constipation Blues. Yeah. Like, he, he, he looks like a guy that will haunt. So do you consider it, is it to you, there's an element of status that he died in Paris? Yes. Wow. He, I mean, Paris is a very smelly city, so it would fit right in. See, I mean, okay. hopefully it wasn't a garbage strike or anything going on. I'm going to do my best to pronounce this city. Wait, hold on. Because it wasn't Paris, it was. It, did he? he did he die in France? In, in yeah. arrondissement? I thought you said he died in Paris. He said France. I oh, said he France. did. Oh, I thought. Okay, so he did not die in the city of Paris. Was it maybe suburban Paris that he died? Okay, take. I'm sorry. Take a crack at the where he died. Nuit sorcery. Oh my God! What are you doing? <laughs> Nuit sorcery, France. Nuit sorcery. Sorcery. I'm looking at the same thing you're looking at. How are you getting that out of that? Nuit sur Seine. You okay, know the, the Seine River runs through Paris and no, France. No, I've never been to Europe. Excuse me. No, but uh, uh, <laughs> how are you getting sui sui out of S E I N E? I said Nuit sorcery. Nuit. Nuit sorcery. Sorry out of S E I N E. Sorry. Yeah, because it's France. S E I N E. Okay, and Paris. Sorry. R I S. Okay. Well, anyway, yeah, there you go. Nearly sir, sir, just sir. west of Fra uh, west of Paris, so probably suburban Paris. Yeah. And he died. He died in surgery. Am I correct on that? I Wasn't didn't... he having like a gallbladder removed or something? Or I don't know. Maybe the constipation got him. Maybe it finally, finally got he him. He had emergency surgery after an aneurysm. Was it a rectal aneurysm? Is that even a thing? It doesn't say. Okay. Well, they say you're right. Maybe what you in know. France it is. Maybe it is. They write what you, you write what you know, and so maybe constipation blues came directly out of his gastrointestinal distress. Mm. Well, anyway, yeah. Listen, people are people are complaining that Whitney Houston's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Screaming Jay Hawkins isn't. But again, this is. I'm just surprised he's not, because they really love going back to those kind of um, foundational artists. And a lot of times it's people you've never heard of, right? A lot of people don't know who Sister Rosetta Tharp is, but if she should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Screaming Jay Hawkins checks a lot of boxes. Yeah, that's kind Cleveland, of Cleveland, grandfather ostensibly of shock rock. You could definitely make the case for that. He, uh, you know. He looks like a medicine man. Like the, the guys that you would find in like New Orleans that you have to like sacrifice someone to. <laughs> He seems like that type of guy. Sacrifice someone? Yeah, like uh, I'm getting this from American Horror Story. He looks like that guy that one of the uh, one of the witches like had a witch doctor, like a voodoo medicine man yeah, or something. Like they, I, I think in the movie it's like Ali Baba or something, mm -hmm. or in the TV show, he looks like that type of guy. So he does, you know, check all the boxes to someone that would be in like the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Well, I, I think it would be great if he was in there. Ron writes me, Alan, I saw Back to the Future in the theater yesterday, and all I could hear was you hitting the post on Power of Love. Isn't that Back to the Future 2, or is no, that 1? No, Power of Love is the first one. What's the one from 2? There's not really a song associated with 2. Because in two, 2, they go to the future, and then they go... It, it's a lot but of rehashing Huey, the other stuff. Didn't Huey Lewis do songs for each one of the three Back to the Future I, movies? Not, not that were memorable. Power of Love is the only one that I can think Power of. Power of Love. Bradley one from Huey Lewis. You're going to see this in the movie. Ah, back to the Future. Huey Lewis signs the news, everybody. 100.7 WMMS. The buzzer. Yeah, that was pretty good. That was one of my five. Uh, it wasn't Back in Time from 2. Got to get back in time. Wasn't that the Huey Lewis track from Back to the Future 2? I think those were in both of them. Oh, were they really? I, I, I don't know. I just remember an SNL bit where Huey Lewis was in the elevator and Kevin Nealon is standing in there and he keeps going, got to get back in time. I th or Michael J. Fox, maybe. Mm -hmm. Probably not Huey Lewis. Michael J. Fox might have been the host. Do you have Michael J. Fox in your celebrity death pool? Not yet. Not yet. I mean, he's lived with it for a long, long mm -hmm. time, but I mean, there's there's got to be a finish line for him. That'll be a big deal when Michael J. Fox goes. 
because he's so uh, he's so publicly revered, and he still you kind of have him uh, kind of frozen in amber in your mind because he really hasn't done anything for so long. You still think of him as a young man, even though he's probably in his early sixties. Do you have Michael J. Fox in your celebrity death pool, pound cake? No. You don't. Who's in your celebrity death pool? Yeah, Michael J. Fox is 62, one of Canada's favorite sons. Uh, well, I said Janice Dickinson. I'm, I'm really surprised she held out this long. Okay. Um, and I think the only one I, other one I had was like Shia LaBeouf. You have Shia LaBeouf just because you think he's uh, he's got some bad habits or... I think he's like fell off the deep end. He he was like super. But isn't he kind of been out doing nothing for a while? That's the, that's like the worst time because like they're not busy, so they just yeah do a bunch of drugs or whatever. Um, so who else? I had another one in there. Uh, Bam Bam Margera. Okay, yeah, I'm always the old people are easy. Mm-hmm. I'm always yeah, interested I'm to hear right. Me too. I'm always interested to hear like people go, oh Dick Van Dyke. I mean, if you had Bob Barker, easy, or Tony yeah. Bennett, I, I your, like Jimmy Carter, that's easy. I mean, I look at the. Dr- trajectory of their life. I'm like, Janice Dickinson is definitely past her prime. Right. Um, she ha- has known to have some trauma from from Cosby, from her father, from probably working in the industry, being a model for, you know, 30 plus, 40 plus years. And then she has substance abuse, like, and she's older. So she has all these things against her. And the fact that she's holding out, I'm like, okay, that's a strong, that's a strong woman. Like she's been through a lot and no one has seen of her in forever. So she has been there for a while. You know, when the celebrities get older, they have the obituaries ready to go. They've been written for a while. <laughs> That's so messed up. Well, you got to have it so ready. Messed, I mean, no, you don't have to have it ready. If you're the New York Times or, yeah, you got to have it ready. Were well, you guys going to sit there and do all their research then? Oh my God. It's called preparation. You yeah. got to have it ready. For Bob Barker, you can have it ready. Yeah. But Michael J. Fox, I mean, I guarantee there's an obituary on him somewhere. And so if that happens, yeah, uh, it's ready to go. I remember. I mean, sometimes people have a little bit of fun with it. Uh, one of the headlines I saw when Tony Bennett died was Bennett leaves heart and other organs in San Francisco. Even though I don't think he died in San Francisco, but yeah, Tony Bennett died this summer. I hope Shia LaBeouf holds out because Bob Barker died in August. He could still come back. He's hot still. How about uh, Amanda Bynes? No, she's too protected. Like, she, she doesn't even have control of her. Protected own. from death? Yeah, because there, she's not going to do anything, unfortunately. Oh, I got one. Delonte West. What well, is I, he up to? Yeah, Delonte West. Because he just keeps having a hard time. Is he still in the news, or is he still I mean, homeless? He hasn't, he hasn't been in the news, but, like, he, every time he ends up in the news, somebody tries to help him, and then he ends up back on the street. So I don't know where he's at right now, but I, I feel oh, like yeah, he's... Oh, yeah, I forgot about him. Yeah, that's a, that would be my pick. That was the guy who, what banged was the LeBron's rumor? Mom. His Oh, he banged LeBron's mom, right. right. That's the rumor. Gotcha. Rumor. Unsubstantiated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have you watched any women's power slap? I know we talked about the power slap league, and then it kind of went away because I think early on the men's power slap league had some controversy surrounding it. Is the it. women's one the one where they do butts? No, they do faces. Oh, okay. I've, I've seen the butt ones that they do on, uh, I've seen it on Instagram and TikTok and stuff. I'll show you some here. It's no okay. less brutal just because it's women because a lot of times they'll get uh, wrestlers and, and people from other uh, other countries to do this. One Sheena Bathory and Christine Wolmerans were in this power slap. Now, I've heard of Sheena Bathory. I've never heard of the other woman. But obviously, she's hoping to become kind of the big breakout star here. They call her, she was in something called, do you remember the lingerie fighting championship? (laughs) Remember that? Sheena Bathory was in that. They called her the Hungarian Hurricane. And she fought for the lingerie fighting, uh, what's it called? Lingerie fighting championships is what it was called. She was the Hungarian Hurricane. She fought jujitsu. And so a lot of these people, trans because Dana White runs the Power Slap League. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he's got his hands in these various MMA and MMA-adjacent leagues. So Sheena Bathory. So the first slap here, Christine Wolmerens takes it pretty well, if you're watching this here. But we're going to find out. Oh, you see that? Just yeah, to the face. Wow. 
But we're going to find out. Wow. Oh, Not just mean mugs her because she takes it. But then Sheena Bathory knocks her out. And it looks like she slaps her not as hard. But, and I don't know how you get a TK, I, I don't know how you get a KO with the slapping, but this girl I think girl you knock him out. I think you literally knock him out. Oh. Wait, put it again. Was it? Was on you. But it's like, she, it's like she fell down and was dazed. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Oh. This is massive oh. head trauma. I mean, it looks like... I don't it, like... stop. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't like violence. Violent sports. Well, power slap. And this girl's like, I want to slap Ronda Rossi. I that, like that uh, who I want next. Bring her to me. Now knowing all this, what do you want to be next for you here? Next? Uh, maybe Ronda Rossi. <laughs> she has so many type of sports. I like this reporter in the superhero outfit. Okay, with skin tight slap. leather. Not, and we both have judo background. Oh, Obviously, I have much big respect to her because she did it much better, higher level. But it would be really a, a big pleasure to fight against her. <laughs> hey, Dana, there's an idea. Ah, big pleasure to fight against her. I'd love to slap her face. A slap that hard will give you tinnitus. Like well, That's what I'm saying. This girl, you know, if they're boxing and somebody gets knocked out, they go down and they're out. Right? Lights out. Mm -hmm. These girls, you keep getting slapped. You just keep getting your bell rung, like on. So you end up falling backwards, but your eyes are open. You're staring. <laughs> I mean, so women's power slap is out there happening. You, of course, you got to watch it on Rumble. Do you know what Rumble is? Rumble is like a far right social platform. That's where this air. You know, for people who think Twitter's too woke, uh, not enough Nazis. So Rumble probably grabbed this right away. Oh, women getting slapped? We're way into that. Yes, our audience would love to watch women getting slapped. I don't like but they're that. trying to, Dana White's trying to get it out there and get people paying attention to it. They did ask him if there was going to be an interim fight for Stipe. They canceled uh, the big Madison Square Garden thing because John Jones tore his peck. And so they were like, are you going to have Stipe fight someone else? And he said unequivocally, no. Stipe is not fighting for an interim title. You know what I mean? I, I, I wouldn't. So Jones said, I want to fight Stipe. I said, you're fighting Stipe. This is, you have the greatest heavyweight of all time versus the greatest mixed martial artist of all time. This is a legacy fight for both of those guys. I mean, to even call Stipe and ask Stipe to fight for an interim title is, you know, complete disrespect. What if we put Stipe in women's power slap? Like, as a uh, referee. As okay. a referee. A referee, that's different. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm Something gonna, to consider. If you uh, Google or go to YouTube and search butt slap competition, uh, that that's more my speed. I feel like we played this when it was the booty slapping competition. Yeah. These girls got some hands. cakes, boy. Yeah, right? They Hi. practice on the heavy bag. My channel, yeah. it's Bella. So, I don't know if you've been aware, but all over TikTok right now, there's been booty slapping competitions. Maybe it's just my For You page, but they're like this one and this one. So I thought, I'm going to bring down seven sexy OnlyFans girls. Woo! I'm going to recreate it, because why not content? See, why don't they put shows like this on OnlyFans? <laughs> I mean, Bill, let's be honest. Who could possibly be the audience for something like that? I, I subscribe to the channel. <laughs> <laughs> Who could possibly want to see that? Uh, booty on booty this, crime? This, this may... Yeah, the first comment is, can we get this into the Olympics? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Every other dumb thing is in the Olympics. Right. Let's put booty slapping in there. Mm. Well, good. I'm happy to be reminded of that. Of the booty. What's the channel? You said you... <laughs> you said that you... Arabella Mia is the... Ah, the, all right. So, yeah. You know, it's for educational purposes. Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's Mikey, their women's sports. You know, pay them, pay them. <laughs> it's their, uh, it's their duty to slap that booty. Yeah.
I'm going to break here. If you want to send me a text, 35192, I'll have another $1,000 for you. Another keyword from the Buzzard Bookie coming up at 330. And right after the break, you want to go see Ancient Aliens Live. You like that show on the History Channel? They're doing a road show. It's going to get here next Thursday night out at MGM Northfield Park. The Bill and Park Show. Everywhere on our free iHeartRadio app.